Okay, let's get straight on with this. I think the best way to illustrate uh, this is to just do some examples. So um, here's an example. I've drawn two masses on springs between two walls, okay? And I'm gonna assume the walls are fixed, okay? There are, I'm gonna model it though as four nodes with three edges. Okay, so there'll be nodes naught, one, two, three. I've, I've started with naught as the labeling because I'm eventually gonna focus only on the two masses, the yellow masses there, and I want to call those one and two. So I've, I've called the wall node naught. This case, okay. So um, in principle, um, here's our uh, here's our vector of displacements. Here it's phi one phi zero phi one phi two phi three. For simplicity, I'm going to assume the masses of one and two. Masses one and two are are, are one, and I like to keep them simple to begin with. So let's assume that all of the spring constants are also one. Now you remember that the general equation that I derived on the last uh, uh, lecture was to show you what Newton's second law tells us for spring mass networks like this. And it says that the vector of external forces on the masses minus the weighted Laplacian times the displacement vector is equal to some, um, some matrix of um, masses, diagonal matrix of masses times the second derivative of the dis displacement vector. Okay, so that's the general equation. Okay, but I, I want to kind of consider this for this example just to show you how it, things slightly simplify. Well, it's instructive to actually write down the full Laplacian here, okay, uh, using the spring constants. And remember, we've got masses 0, 1, 2, and 3. I've used labels 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's just draw up this weighted Laplacian. Well, it's just a regular Laplacian here. And as you can see, look, um, I've got um, from, from node one, I've got this there, and then there's a minus one because it's connected there, but it's not connected there. And then if we look at mass one, we've got, um, we've got two, but there's one there, minus one there and there. And then in mass two, we've got similar situation. And then for mass three, we've got um, a one connected to two, and there's nothing there. Okay, so that's our full Laplacian weighted by these, conduct these uh, spring constants. But what we're going to do is we are going to specify that this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. It's like grounding two nodes if you're thinking about electric circuit. So I don't really need to bother with those equations. Um, because we know, don't we, by thinking about our Scher sure complements, that when we ground something or set the voltage or set the displacement, then what it means is we, we can work out kind of an effective conductance or a reaction force in this case at those nodes, but we don't need to solve for the phi because we're specifying the phi. Okay, the node potential is specified, which means we might end up working out a divergence there, but we normally do that after we've calculated. Uh, the displacements of the of the kind of the other nodes. Well, that means in this case really that it's. Uh, let me just uh, draw a different color here. It actually means that it's actually only this because I've set these to zero. When I operate on this with x look, it's only really this matrix. Let me call that k hat. It's like a a, a reduced Laplacian. It's only really that that's going to come into play here. So what it means is my system over here, uh, I can reduce, I can redefine my x hat now to be just phi one, phi two. And I can, re I can introduce my f hat to be f one, f two. The external forces are only on nodes one and two. And then what it means is, so having introduced those, let's keep everything separate. What it means is I've got f hat minus k hat x hat is equal to, well, the, the, the reduced matrix of masses, M, will actually just be the identity because of this condition, okay? So I don't need to worry about that. And then I can just write d squared x hat by dt squared, where I'm thinking now of x hat as a, as a uh, time-dependent vector. It's got two components, but they both depend upon time. It's these things I'm looking for here. Okay, so that's now just a two-dimensional vector system uh, using uh, the identities there because of this, and then we've just got this, uh, this reduced Laplacian um, k-hat. 
So I'm going to show you how to solve that. Now notice in particular that some other courses that you might be taking will come into play now because this isn't just a vector equation. It is a vector equation, but it's not just a simple vector equation that you just solve because we've got time derivatives in there. So in fact, it's a vector system of differential equations. In fact, second order differential equations. Okay, you see we've got x hat on both sides there, but we've got second derivatives on the right hand side. So we've got to solve that system of second order equations. And we're going to do that next. Okay, so we're looking at this two masses connected to springs between two fixed walls. And we've reduced the problem to the study of this system Okay, it's a vector uh, system of second order differential equations. It happens to be linear because the x hat, which is the unknown quantity, is the dependent variable, appears linearly here. And what I'm going to do first, as a first example, is I'm going to consider what I call free oscillations. What that means, when I say free, I mean there's no external forces. Okay, it means that I'm going to set this f hat to be zero because those were the vector of external forces on nodes um, on nodes one and two masses one and two so that's the first system that i'm going to consider and you can see then that my uh, um, that my equation re reduces to this this was my k hat okay so i've just got this slightly simplified system of uh, vector differential equations now, I've noticed one thing about that. It's linear and it's got two time derivatives. So what I'm going to do is suppose I do the following thing. Suppose I try x is some constant vector x naught e to the i omega t. Now, I've, where I'm assuming for now that omega is a real number. OK, so if you remember Euler's formula, e to the i omega t is cos omega t plus i sine omega t. OK, so those are, these solutions will be oscillatory in time. OK, so uh, an x naught, by the way, is just a constant vector. OK, so if I if I do that, look, then dx by dt is i omega x naught e to the i omega t. And the second derivative of x by dt squared is just minus omega squared x naught e to the i omega t, okay? Because every time I, br I do a derivative, I bring down a, a factor of i omega. So now if I substitute this into my equation here, I get the following thing. Okay? And actually, let me just substitute here for x naught. This is equivalent to then minus 2 minus 1 minus 1, 2. x naught e to the i omega t is equal to minus omega squared x naught, should be an underline there, e to the i omega t. Now, that's a good place to be, isn't it? Because I've just noticed that I can cancel through those factors those time-dependent functions e to the i omega t, leaving me with the system. Uh, let me, well, there's minus signs cancel. Let me just go back to using k hat. I've got k hat x naught is equal to, I'm going to call it lambda x naught, where lambda is omega squared. Now, look at that, everybody. Isn't that amazing? We don't know what lambda is. And actually, we don't know what x naught is. But if we did, then our solution would look like this. OK, that would be our solution for the displacements. Now, what I've got there in the pink box is what you should recognize from other courses. And the reason that you study them other courses precisely because they appear in situations like this. Uh, this is known as the eigenvalue problem. for k hat. OK, I want to know what the eigenvalue 
lambda hat lambda lambda and the eigenvector x naught of k hat is okay we've reduced our problem to solving the following eigenvalue problem for k hat okay where lambda was omega squared i want to note a couple of things you may be concerned look that uh, the form of solution that I originally posed was this. And you might be concerned because, of course, x is a real vector, but that isn't real because necessarily, because I don't know what x naught is yet, and e to the i omega t certainly isn't real uh, at general times. Okay, so I'm a little bit concerned about whether I'm going to find a real solution at the end of this calculation. This, you know, if I find the, omega, the, the lambda and the x naught, I certainly find solutions to the equation, but they might not be real. So how can we guarantee that that's the case? Well, first of all, note that um, if x naught e to the i omega t is a solution, so is x naught e to the minus i omega t. And you can see that quite easily, look, because uh, lambda here, you see, I've got to solve this. Lambda here is depends on omega squared. So it doesn't matter whether it's plus or minus omega. That's the first note. Second note is that if I take a, a complex conjugate of my equation here, then I'm assuming, by the way, that omega is real. Then, uh, sorry, that should be an x naught bar. OK, but the k is real. So that means that k hat x naught bar is equal to lambda x naught bar. OK, uh, so if x naught e to the i omega t is a solution, so is x naught bar e to the i omega t. OK, so in short, so the summary is uh, this particular combination and I can divide it by two. You can check that both that and that are also solutions, just by the linearity of the system here. You can check that those particular linear combinations of uh, the solutions, these also solve star, where star is my equation over there. It's very easy to check. And why do you think I've written down those two expressions there? Well, because these are just the real and imaginary parts of this vector here. OK, so my problem is solved because what I can do is let me just find this vector x naught e to the i omega t. And then at the end of the calculation, I'm just going to take the real and imaginary parts of it. And both of those will be admissible solutions to star the equation that I'm trying to solve and they will be real valued. OK, I've removed the figure, but we know what to do and we're in the position to finish off the solution now. We know that we need to find the eigenvalues of K solving this where lambda is omega squared. We know how to find the eigenvalues, don't we? We have to solve this characteristic equation to, you have to find the solutions of this determinant condition. It's the characteristic equation, some people call it, okay, which um, is the condition in this case, that the, that should be a hat, sorry. The determinant is 2 minus lambda, minus 1, minus 1, 2 minus lambda is equal to 0. Okay, well, we should all be able to work out 2 by 2 determinants, so it's... Uh, the diagonal squared minus the product of the off diagonals, which is 1, is equal to 0. And I think you can see that, look, let me just rearrange that. 2 squared is equal to 1, so let me take a square root of that. It's 2 minus lambda is plus or minus 1. So lambda is 1 or 3. Okay, that's my solution for the possible eigenvalues of this k-hat matrix. And then um, let's just, what we, what we then do is we then take this... Um, And you want, you want to try to find, you know, x1 hat, x2 hat, 
that there's equal to that. So you can see, look, that if lambda is equal to one, then I only need to look at one of these equations. I need uh, two minus one times x one hat minus x two hat is equal to zero, which means that x one hat is equal to x two hat. So the corresponding x naught is some constant, let's call it c1 times 1, 1. Okay, that's the eigenvector corresponding to lambda is equal to 1. Okay, let's just do lambda is equal to 3. And you can see by the same kind of manipulations that I get 2 minus 3 times x1 hat minus x2 hat is equal to 0, which gives me that x1 hat is minus x2 hat. So the corresponding eigenvector is some other constant times 1 minus 1. Okay, so the e vector corresponding to lambda is equal to 3. So there we have it. We have now found uh, the possible solutions to this, and we can write down uh, the final uh, thing. Uh, the x hat that we're looking for is, well, we want it to be real, so let's take the real part of some complex valued constant times this vector c11, and then that was the e to the i omega t, but omega was the square root of one, okay, which is just t, okay, because omega square root of one is one, or minus one, but because I've taken this real part here, that means that's including that minus one. And then uh, I've got a c2, I'm calling it, one minus one, times e to the i omega here was uh, the square root of three, which is uh, square root of three t, okay? And c1 and c2 here are both complex constants, complex valued, okay? And then when I take the real part of the whole thing, I'll end up with something real, okay? But that, my friends, is the solution for the x hat, giving the displacements of the two masses, masses one and two, in my problem of free oscillations of this system that I started with, with two masses with three springs between two fixed walls. And you can see there how um, the, the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of the k hat, this reduced uh, weighted Laplacian comes in. Um, I just wanna say, look, that of course, C1 and C2 are both complex valued numbers, so there's gonna be four real uh, constants involved in this solution, and of course, if you wanted to find what those constants are for a particular solution, you'd have to give me some initial conditions. Remember, this is a dynamical problem. We're solving a dynamical evolution problem. Here is the time dependence. It depends upon four real parameters, and those parameters will be, will be determined by some set of initial conditions that you give me.